Hello class, today we are going to be talking about job um, processing or processing co process costing. And so uh, the PowerPoint is located in your Blackboard under week eight. And so let's get started. The first thing we're going to talk about a little bit is job costing versus process costing. Job costing, remember we talked about last week, was a specific item. Some uh, examples of those is custom made machine or houses. It's a distinct identified unit of a product or service. A CPA firm, an auditing company uh, could be a job uh, costing and one of your homework assignments from last week uh, dealt with job and uh, processing and you had to decide which one's which. Process costing uh, systems, masses of identical or similar units of a product or service. Examples are food or chemical processing. Uh, so like right here in Indianapolis, we have uh, Eli Lilly and they have a manufacturing plant here. Uh, so that would be a process costing system that they would probably be using. So today we're going to be talking about some examples on how to figure out the inventory cost for process costing. Now process costing is a system where the unit cost of a product or service is obtained by assigning total costs to many identical similar units of output. Uh, unit costs are computed by dividing total costs incurred by the number of units of output uh, from the production process. Each unit receives the same or similar amounts of direct costs, uh, direct labor costs, and manufacturing overhead. We can't uh, break it out, well, this particular item cost me this and this one cost me that. We're going to basically put them all, group them all together, and um, spread out the cost over the entire production. In a job costing system, individual jobs use different quantities uh, of, of resources. So it would be incorrect uh, to cost each job at the same average production cost. So if we were doing job costing, uh, a chair could possibly use less labor than a, a chest of drawers. Uh, so that's why we don't do an average pro production cost over a job costing. In contracts with identical or similar units of production or services are mass produced, process costing is used to calculate average production cost for the units produced. Uh, so we can easily, they pro, you know, go on an assembly line, easily say, okay, it took me five seconds to fill this bottle, five seconds to fill this bottle and such. Um, so it's easier to just do a mass produced, take the entire amount of produced uh, divide it by the, the cost or the cost divided by what's produced to get the average cost. In a job costing, oh no, okay, process costing systems separate cost into cost categories according to when costs are introduced in the process. We have the direct materials are usually added at the beginning of the production process or at the start of subsequent department down the assembly. Uh, conversion costs are generally added equally among along the production process. So most of the time we're going to put all our direct material costs at the very beginning and then based on the percentage of completion, the conversion costs will be added. So let's look at the processes three ways with no beginning inventory or ending inventory or work in process, no beginning work in process inventory and some ending work in process and some work in process uh, at both the beginning and in the end. When using process costing without any end of, uh, beginning or, end of, or ending work in process inventory, all costs that are introduced into the process during the period will be assigned to the finished units leaving the work in process inventory at the end of the period. So there's a five-step processing, uh, uh, pr five-step process cost allocation. The first thing we do is summarize the flow of physical units of output, then compute the output in terms of equivalent units, summarize the total cost to account for, compute cost per equivalent unit, and then assign total cost of units completed to the units at, in the ending work in process. Now, how do we find equivalent units? A derived amount of output units that takes the quantity of each input in units completed in the and in unfinished units in the work in process. It converts the quantity of input 
into amount of completed units that could be produced with a quantity of input. They're calculated separately for each input and when calculated equivalent units in step two focus on quantities and disregards dollar amounts until the equivalent units are computed. So let's take a look at this. We have the beginning work in process of zero. We start at 400, so we have to account for 400 units. Now, the completed and transfer out uh, during the current year, the current period. So that means that all the um, direct materials will be used and all the conversion costs will be applied for the items that are completed and transferred out. So we have a total of 175. So you'll see in the equivalent units, we have 175 uh, for direct materials, 175 conversion costs. Now, earlier when we first started, we said with the work in process direct materials, they're applied at the beginning of the uh, process. So that leaves us, we had 400 to account for, we have 175 that is completed now, so we have to account for another 225. So we take the 225 times 100% for the direct materials, so all of the units are accounted for in the direct materials. Now they're saying that 225 in the conversion costs were at 60% completed. So we take the 225 at 60% and we get 135. So work done in the current period only for direct materials, all of the direct materials will be accounted for uh, based on 400 units. Conversion costs will be accounted for based on 310 units. Now, in step three, the next step we do, we have total production of 500 or 50,600 um, with 32,000 of it being direct materials and conversion costs of 18.6. So we have to account for that much, 32,000 uh, in direct materials and 18.6 in conversion costs. So the first step we do is get the cost per unit. So we're gonna take the 32,000 and divide it by the 400 because remember all the units are accounted for for direct materials. So we get $80 per unit there. And then the conversion cost, we take the 18.6 and divide it by 310. And so for conversion costs, we have $60 per unit. In step five, we're assigning the cost. And so transfer and completed, the first thing we'd wanna do is take that 175 we got uh, for the number that we transferred and completed, multiply it by the 80 and then multiply it by the 60. And then the work in process, uh, to figure that out, we're gonna take the 225 uh, from the, uh, the chart before, take that times 80, and then uh, 135 times 60. And that's how we come up and break up the money into the different uh, pro products here. So if we take 175 times 80, and then 175 times 60, the total is 24,500. Take the 225 times 80 and 135 times 60, the total is 26,100. Add those together, I get the 50, thousand six hundred dollars I needed to count for up in step three. Now here's the T account flow chart for this. So we have accounts payable in step one um, and that's the work in process, the 32,000 in direct materials that we had. And then the various accounts, so those would be probably the overhead. So that's how we got the 18,600. Now, in the, the thing before, we discovered here that 26,100 is going to be in my work in process. So that's my balance. So the difference is the 24,5 that's taken out and put into the work in process tr uh, testing. And then we don't know any of the others yet, but that's the flow. So we have the 32 of direct materials, the 18,600 of overhead, either direct labor or overhead. We know that our balance is 26,1 and we know that we took out 24,500. That goes into the next room. Now, we can also do the weighted average processing cost method. Process costing can be accomplished using the weighted average method or the FIFO method. We'll look at the weighted average calculates the cost per equivalent unit 
for all work done to date, regardless of the accounting period in which it's done. And it assigns this cost of, uh, to equivalent units completed and transferred out of the process and to equivalent units in an ending working process inventory. The weighted average cost is the total of all costs entering the working process account divided by the total equivalent units of work, and work done to date. The beginning balance of the working process account uh, is blended with the current co period cost. So let's take a look at uh, the case three. So in this case, we have working process that we had from before of 225 units. Uh, started the current period, we started 275. So we need to account for 500. Now out of that 500, 400 was completed and moved uh, out of this uh, particular room. And so that accounts for 100 that's still in work in process. Now, we have, again, the transfer to completed out we have all 400, both for direct materials and for conversion costs. Now, the 100 here for direct materials, remember, that's all at once. So we put that in. And according to the information given here, we have 50% of conversion. So we're going to take 50% of 100 with this 50. So we account for um, all 500. So in direct materials, the equivalent units is going to be 500. In conversion costs, the equivalent units is going to be 450. Now, we have the work and trial process at the beginning from the very first one of 26,100 that we have to account for. Then we also have the cost added during the period of 36,180. So we have to account for all of the $62,280. Now, with direct materials, uh, we have $18,000 in conversion cost and direct materials from previous. And then we also have um, $8,100. Uh, left in conversion costs from the previous working process. And so if you go back, you get those numbers from the beginning in inventory from the, uh, the ending inventory from the previous one. So now we have to break out the cost of equivalence. So direct materials, we were told it was given on page uh, 613 uh, the direct materials were 19,800, and then the conversion costs were 16,380. So my total account for direct materials is 37,800. Conversion cost is 24,480. We divide it by the equivalent units and get a rate of 7,560 and 5,440 for conversion costs. We take that uh, completed 400 and then 100 for the work in process to break out the 37,800, uh, then the 5440 times the 400 and but times the 50 to get 24,480 uh, for all my costs being accounted for. So in my completed, I'm going to transfer out 52,000. And in my work in process, I'm going to transfer out 10,280. Now, two critical figures arise out of step five in the cost allocation process. The amount, uh, the journal entry transferring the allocated cost of units completed and sent from work in process inventory to cost of goods uh, or to finished goods inventory and the ending balance of the work in process inventory account that will appear on the balance sheet. Now, in the first in, first out, um, you can go and look on page 671 in your book for the journal entries. Uh, the work in process, we have the debit to 32,000, accounts payable control of 32,000, work in process, uh, 18.6, various accounts, 18.6, uh, and then work in process testing and moving it from 24 to 500. Now, 
going on to first in, first out, assigns the cost of the previous accounting period's equivalent units in the beginning work and process inventory to the first units completed and transferred out of the process. Assigns the cost of equivalent units worked during the, process, during the current period first to complete beginning inventory, next to start it and complete it new units, and finally to the units and uh, ending work and process. A distinct feature of the FIFO method um, is that work done in the beginning inventory is kept separate from work done in the current period, and there's no blending of costs as we saw in the weighted average. So this chart, uh, we're going to be doing the example of uh, having the uh, FIFO. So if we take a look at here, going back, uh, we had started off with 225 units. We started during the period 275, so we have to account for 500. So the first thing we have to do is take from the work in process. Um, so remember, when we started this, all the direct costs were taken care of at the beginning. So for the equivalent units for the 225, for my previous equivalent units, I don't have anything going into direct materials because that was taken care of when I first put this in. Now you remember we did 60% conversion costs, so that leaves us 40% left to put into these units. So we're going to take 225 times 40% to get the 90. Now that leaves us um, 175 to complete uh, that were started and completed in this particular item. So We take the 175 times the 100% for both of them. So my equivalent units is 175. The work in process, um, we have 100 units left over. So again, we take the 100 times the 100% to get the 100 units for the direct materials and then 50% for the conversion costs. So my equivalent units for direct materials is 275, which is the amount that I actually started and then the conversion cost is 315. Takes into account what I had to still finish from the previous period, plus what I started and completed and what's still in work in process. Now, remember the beginning inventory, we have to put in the whole 1800 and 8100. Now that automatically comes down to step 15. Our cost per unit is only calculated on the added cost for that period. So we're going to take 19.8 divided by 275 and 16.380 divided by 315. So we get a rate of 72 and 52. Now, the cost added at the beginning of the work in process. So basically what you're going to do here is if you go back to the previous slide, you're going to take all these numbers and multiply it. So zero times the rate, 175 times the rate, 100 times the rate, 90 times the rate, 175, and 50 times the rate. So here we have those numbers. So that's how we come up to accounting for all 37,000 and then the 81 or the 24,480. So work in process, we had a total of 2610, which we just bring it straight down from up here. The cost added was 4,680. So my total from beginning inventory was 30,780. My started and completed, I had a total cost of 21,700. Total cost of completed units and uh, transfer out, I'm just gonna add that 30,000 to 21 and get 52,480. And then what's left in, in work in process is the 98,000. So I add those two together and I account for all $62,280 um, of my costs. The results of the process, um, two critical figures arise out of the step five of the cost allocation process. The amount of the journal entry transferring the allocated cost of units completed and sent for the work in process to finish goods and the ending balance 
of the working process. So FIFO assumes that, um, so now we're going to compare the two. FIFO assumes that all the higher cost units from the previous period in the beginning working process are the first ones to be completed and transferred out of the ending working process consist only, only the lower cost current period units. The weighted average smooths out the cost per equivalent unit by assuming that the lower cost units are transferred out and some higher costs remaining at the end of working process. Managers use this information from process costing systems to make pricing and production mixed de uh, decisions and understand how well a firm's processes are performing. FIFO provides managers with information about changes in the cost per unit from one period to the next. And in a period of rising prices, the weighted average will decrease taxes because the cost of goods will be higher uh, and operating income will be lower. Transferred in cost are cost incurred uh, in previous departments that are carried forward as the product's cost when it moves to a subsequent process in the production cycle. Um, that also called previous department costs. Journal entries are made to mirror the pro process of production from department to department and transferred in costs are treated as if they are separate type of direct materials added to the beginning of the process. So here's an example for the beginning and ending working process and transfer in costs uh, weighted average. So we had the beginning working process of 240. We transferred in 400 units. And so we have to account for 680, uh, 640. Um, now, how many did we complete and transfer out was 440. So that means all the transfer in costs were accounted for, all the direct material costs were accounted for, and conversion costs. Now, in the work in process, that means we have 200 in that. Um, now, transfer in costs, of course, everything's going to be accounted for. So 100% of those 200 units are accounted for. Uh, there are no direct material costs added uh, yet, and 80% of the conversion costs are added. So the equivalent units for transfer in cost is uh, 640. For drag materials is 440 and conversion cost is 600. So in step three, we take the beginning work in process, which was 51,000, which is 33,600, zero and 18,000. And then we take the added in, so 113,000, would consist of 52 in transfer costs, 13, two in direct materials, and 48, six in conversion costs. We take those sums of each one, divide it by the equivalent units and get the rate, and then multiply those from by the numbers from the chart here, the 440 and the 200. And so my total cost allocated uh, to complete it and transfer it out was 120,000. 890 and working process is 44 5, 5, 10. Now, in step in the beginning, ending, and transferred out FIFO method, so we do the same thing. We have the 240 from the beginning and added in 600, so we have to account for, uh, I'm sorry, we added in 400, so we have to account for four, or 640. So my beginning inventory, of course, I'm going to have to have all, uh, no transferred in because it's already there. My direct materials, I'm going to add all of that in. And according to the conversion cost, I'm supposed to, I had already counted for 62.5%. So I take that from 100 and multiply it by uh, 240. And I get 90. My started and completed. is we have a total of 440 coming out of physical units transferred out. For 240 came from the previous balance. So I take the 440 transferred out and minus the 240, I get 200. 
and all those transfer costs, all the direct materials and all the conversion costs are accounted for. So all 200 units get accounted for. And the work in process is what's left over from the 640, so that's 200 units. Transfer in cost, of course, everything's uh, transferred in, so 200 units. We have no direct material costs right now, and my equivalent units is 80% of the 200. So that's how I get the six, uh, 160. So in the next slide, again, um, because we're doing first in, first out, all of the first call, the work in process just goes straight from step three to step five. We only do a rate by, based on the cost added. So we add the 52,480, the 132, and the 48,6, divide those by the equivalent units and get the rates. And then basically what I do is just take the equivalent units that we got in the previous thing here and transfer them down and multiply it by the rates. So we had a total of 51,6 in beginning work and process. The cost added was 16,920. So the beginning uh, aver um, was 68,520. Started and completed was 53,840. Add those two numbers together, I get the 122,360. Add in my ending inventory is 165,880. And so I've accounted for all the costs that I need to account for. Points to remember about transfer costs. Be sure to include the transfer in cost from previous departments in your calculations. That's the one thing that a lot of people forget to do. Uh, when calculating the cost to be transferred using the FIFO method, do not overlook the costs that were in beginning work and process, which may now be part of units transferred. Unit costs may fluctuate between periods, so transferred um, units may contain batches of accumulated at different costs. Those units costs discussed in item three on the prior slide will be transferred to the next department at one average unit cost. Units may be measured in different denominations in different departments. So you might have one that says feet in one department and measured by yards in another or kilos versus liters. And in this case, measurements must be converted to the correct measurement. You can't have that you have to convert them all to the same measurement. So um, the hybrid costing system, uh, we're not really going to cover all that much today, so don't worry about that. Um, and the operation costing system. Some of the terms that you need to use, I would make sure that you understand what uh, each one of these mean and make notes of those so that uh, you can use that on your test. Uh, if you have any questions about anything we covered, please do not hesitate to ask. Uh, I will try to get a example up for you here shortly. If you have any questions, again, let me know. Bye-bye.